Guys, in the last video, we kind of saw the types and, and uh, respective etiology of osteosarcoma. <clears throat> that is primary, secondary. In primary, it will be RB gene, P53 tumor, overexpression of MDM2 gene. You remember all these? These were the etiologies in the primary. And the environmental, you had radiation, oncogenic virus. Secondary, we saw pre-existing diseases like coronic osteomyelitis, Paget's disease of bone, fibrous dysplasia, which is a tumor-like lesion of bone. Tumor-like, it is, lesion of bone. Then we saw multiple osteochondromas. Now we will see the pathogenesis. Pathogenesis, the tumor arises around the metaphysis, in the metaphysis. It arises centrally in the metaphysis. It is highly malignant. So what it will do, no? Longitudinally also it will extend into the medullary cavity. Laterally also both sides it will expand, extend, right? So this is this is the bone. Look at this. Where you have metaphyseal tumor here. It will go longitudinally into the medullary cavity. Laterally also it will extend. And when it extends, it will destroy the cortex. Cortex also it will destroy. And it will break the cortex and it will also lift the periosteum. When it lifts the periosteum and it penetrates through the periosteum, it will start affecting the surrounding soft tissue also. Okay. So look at this again. The tumor is highly malignant. It extends longitudinally into the medullary cavity. Laterally on either side, it will break the cortex and it will lift the periosteum. Break the cortex, lift the periosteum. Now if the periosteum gets breached, the tumor grows relentlessly into the surrounding soft tissue. And the only tissue that is able to stop its uh, spread is the epiphyseal plate in that direction, I think, in the epiphyseal plate. Moving on from the surrounding soft tissue, it can metastasize widely to wear and all. Look at this. It can metastasize to lungs, bones, other bones, brain, other side. So other bones you can remember, then lungs and brain. Okay, it can metastasize. That is why this osteosarcoma is like, having very poor prognosis, etc. Now, let us move on to the clinical features. Now, if a person comes to you with pain, tenderness, swelling in the affected extremity, that's the lower end of femur, upper end of humerus, that's the shoulder joint, hip joint, okay? Mainly here, you can see that the metaphysis is affected. The serum <coughs> ALP, that is the serum alkaline phosphatase will be more, okay? And radiologically, you can see that the metaphysis is affected. There is a sunburst pattern. There is a sunburst pattern. Metaphysis will be affected. Sunburst pattern. Okay, it starts in the metaphysis. If you want, you can write that here. Okay. Sunburst pattern, you can see due to osteogenesis, right? And there is a Cordman triangle where? The presence of Cordman triangle between the elevated periosteum and underlying surface of the cortex. Oops, let's see if you can spot it. Sunburst appearance. This seems to be a triangle. Triangle, triangle. Cordman triangle, the periosteum is lifted. So it forms a triangle with the surface under underlying surface of the cortex okay cord bands triangle so where will you see sunburst pattern and cord bands triangle osteosarcoma don't forget okay let's call our friend and ask him to explain i understood i understood i know i know osteosarcoma the classic features in radiology will be sunburst pattern and cord bands triangle that represents the lifted periosteum the angle that it forms like an angle, it looks like it forms a triangle, triangle with the underlying cortex. And uh, sunburst pattern is because of osteogenesis. Very, very good, baby. So you understood everything. Very good. So moving on. Let's look at the gross. Then we will look at the microscopy. Then we will look at the variants. Come back for the next video if you want to learn the gross microscopy and then the 
variants of osteosarcoma very important very 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 important for your mbbs exam okay bye bye